Hey. Hi, everybody. Um, we're, we're up here in um, American History in the East Conference Room. It's a, kind of a difficult place for people to find, so we are just about ready to begin. This is the Welcome Wednesday. Behind me is Marco Mason. I'll introduce him in a moment, but just hold on. We're going to see if we get a few more people uh, in the room, and then we'll go ahead and start. So thanks for your patience. Hello, welcome. Hi. I'm going to welcome every person that comes in. This is not that hard to I, as far as we know, everything's working. We have the, we're streaming, we're projecting, speakers work, Marco's here. So I think we're now start. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say welcome. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're really happy you can be with, here with us today. Uh, we are welcoming Dr. Marco Mason. Uh, he is a Marie Curie, the Marie Curie Fellow um, at MIT. And the school is your family, Leicester. In Leicester, um, University of Leicester. And he is doing some very interesting research uh, that he's going to talk to us about today. He has a background in design, and he's really looking to, uh, to, to figure out some metrics on how people collaborate in these in projects, how design is used in informing our mobile experiences, and especially focusing on the visitor experience, on the user experience. Um, I think that's a uh, an emphasis that he has come, you know, it's sort of changed as he's moved on. That he needs to really focus on on how visitors are using our digital products. So, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Marco. Um, and I will say it's up to you, Marco, but we usually keep it pretty um, sort of collaborative and participatory. So if you have if something occurs to you or you need some, uh, clarification, uh, please raise your hand or ping us, and we'll uh, try to bring up something uh, that you uh, you send to us via this hangout. Should I do the screen? Uh, no, I'll do no. that. That's fine. That's right. Okay. Uh, you want both? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. You can, you can just. OK. So. Hello, everybody. I'm Marco Mason. I'm Daniel Dissipate. I'm from Italy. This is the reason of my strong Italian accent. And you, fortunately, you can see both of my hands. Anyway. And um, one year and a half, I moved out of Italy, and I started the collaboration with the University of Leicester. The MIT, and uh, just a few words about me. I have background in design and PhD in design, with particular interest in interaction design and uh, user experience design. I use the tool to teach, and uh, I'm not doing this activity now. I really like to start again because I 
so to that free law. And I, as you will see in the slide, uh, I am kind of a part of a museum practitioner and, and designer. So just to credit my, my supervisor, in, in, Dr. Jose Miro is a supervisor at the School of Museum Study, the University of Leicester in the UK. And Professor John Durant is um, my supervisor at MIT, a Science, Technology, and Society program. And uh, the project is funded by the European community under the Marie Curie actions. So the results contest is a digital media design, as Dan anticipated. It, it lies on the uh, interest of museum, visitor, digital technology domains. Uh, we know that nowadays the digital media system, digital media projects are very complex, and they the design requires a strong connection with uh, the voices and, and the aspect that come from the museum, from the technology, and from, from, the, from the visitor. From the, from the visitor. Um, <clears throat> very basically, my objective is to, to, to translate the digital media design practices and formalize the knowledge. So I came from the theory, but actually I'm looking at the practice. So this is the reason why I'm kind of ignored, because I'm, I'm interviewing a lot of interesting people in many museums, in different museums. So the significance is, you know, the theoretical reflection, I, I think that is, is, is important, it's necessary to transfer knowledge from, from, from the reality to to other settings. I am particularly interested in also does it work for academic in the educational setting. There are many things that are moving in this period. If you will be in Museum of the Web, essentially there is the attention to to, to, to find new New way, new principle for, for curriculum in museum informatics and in, in digital. And I hope with my research to bring a little brief in this in this construction and in, in looking at how designer and museum edition work in the, in, in the real world and bring this knowledge to students and other researchers. Uh, the methodology I don't want to spend a lot of words in the methodology, but you know, necessary to mention a little bit of how I'm conducting my research. My research is for pure qualitative, qualitative research. It's grounded theory. It's called grounded theory. It's, okay. it's based on interviews, video interview, consultation of documentation. The documentation is so important to me because I can uh, understand a lot of things. Because it's, you know, it's an evidence of the design process. You know? Most of the time, many times this design process lasts two or three years. And of course, the literature review. And I'm doing, I'm, I like to add the, the hand dirty to do a prototype and maybe I seen something, testing some design methodology. Yeah, your hands were done. It was like the little <laughs> images up for an interface. And um, so there is this preliminary research that, that, that you know, I mapped, I mapped the, the array, working with a lot of, a lot of the picture. And um, I started with the, with the first case study. The first day, after the first case study, I will do another case study. And, 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 and I will, as I might, with more knowledge that comes from the first case study. And so in these layers of, of, of of uh, investigation, I can come out with uh, a theoretical saturation, or at least the theoretical saturation that will satisfy the, the objective that I have. Just to, you know, to synthesize what the theory is. I'm right here in that point because, you know, I spent, it was necessary to invest a lot of time in understanding the Museum, digital museum design environment. So I attended a lot of conferences and I spoke to many people, I read something. And I conducted the first case studies. I, I 
I will show you something in the next slide. And now I'm organizing other case study. I'm here in Washington because we are a few days ago the time we have to first to kick off the, of the, of the United Nations case study. And, uh, so. uh, because it's going to be published, I, I would like to thank the people who gave me the time. And uh, uh, I'm sure that this guy because the presentation is going to be uploaded and published. So I am in this moment of the research. I had a lot of pieces in open. I start to put some patterns. I frame the border of knowledge, but I have still to work hard to find other pieces and find other patterns in order to come out with a final image. So the presentation that I'm going to show you today is not a final presentation of findings, but you know there are some gaps. So your feedback would be precious for me in order to better understand the direction of the research. Okay, again the design context is the digital media design, but I would like to stress the attention to the physical experience. I, I would like to use another metaphor to describe where I'm investigating. If we take into consideration an iceberg, the tip of the iceberg is the outcome of the design activity. Is the, the, the object on, you know, on display, is the content, is the physical space, is, is the exhibit, the digital media, the digital But I'm working under the water in understanding the design, the design activity. The design activity that is constituted of several aspects that I'm, you know, in this moment I, I start to understand and to, 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 to see some category that is the, the, the design activity. So I'm less, inter I'm less interested in the design. There are a lot of interesting and in in very valuable research on about the conclusion, about how well projects are done. But I'm most interested at, at the verb to design, the people design So I I'm diving to, to, in, in this water to understand the the, the aspect. I kind of just already start, I have to do more and more in action to better understand what happened under the water. And so my question, which are the elements that start emerging from this diving? Which elements are missing? And what what we need to look at in further action? Again, that feedback will be production. So in the next slides, I am going to give you a test testing of, of this aspects. And so starting from the collaboration, we all know from important projects like Gallery One, but there, is, there are also other interesting, very interesting projects, how important is designing for collaboration. There is another aspect that I really like when I look at the design, and from a professor that, uh, that is from my part in STS program at MIT, and it, it's, it's, uh, this research is really interesting for me because it, it describes the design process, process as a social process. So the digital media design for, for heritage institutions, for, for museums, involves this constant negotiation among experts from different backgrounds and, of course, for physical as well. And I'm really interested in understanding the, the models of collaboration this is a very recent example of what happened during the interview. It was last week at the Museum of Fine Art when I start another case study. So I don't want to spend many time in describing in detail the, 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 the models of collaboration, but I would like just to say that it's interesting how people connect each other within the museum or with external design field. And there are situations where the, the, 
educator, curator, evaluator with uh, someone in the museum with the, some with design skill, work together and and refer to an external design field and work working in parallel. Right? There are other occasions where uh, the design field, an external design field, is hired from the real beginning and it was like a catalyst around which any actors of the game you know, is, is referred to. So educator refers to the design, the creator refers to design, and so on. It's a different model of, of collaboration. Uh, I'm not interested in the natural. I'm interested in where, uh, to understand where is the design and where are designs in which kind of connection, connection in which kind of method and technique they use to collaborate. So, just to give a very simple example, uh, when there are the visitors or child, the evaluator brings the knowledge that, you know, that, that, that she gathered to the design, is it verbal, through brainstorming, or through other technique, uh, design technique, uh, strategy like personas, or through storytelling techniques that are very useful and, and very you can understand immediately some critical needs and problems of the And related to the collaboration, of course, there is the actors and in uh, the design areas. So I have interviewed with user experience designer, interaction design, user interaction designer, digital content developer, content strategy, a lot of people. I'm not interested in, in doing it that song, even if it would be an interesting search to do. But mostly what I, I care is like to find where these people, in which design area uh, these people are located, and they which the, these people move. So taking as a example the infinity of national mobile system, we have different areas where design, the design. So there is you know, the graphic, the, the, the pure interface, buttons with text. There is the layout. There is the structure of, of the system and, and how the, 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 the visitor navigates to the system, but also the architecture, the information architecture of the system. or matter of uh, all things that designer uh, collaborating very strictly with the, with the museum, traditionalists have to think about. <coughs> there are there is also another very interesting and challenging aspect that is uh, the interaction. The interaction that has to use special a specific mental model to give the visitor Fulfilling experience. But the interaction is not just with the interface, but the interaction is extended to the, to the entire space. So, um, uh, any, any design in, in any field pay attention to the interaction. You know, if designer that design a cup of coffee and pay attention to the interaction the, of the, uh, the user. With the cat. But with digital media, there are, I don't want to say that there are more complex or less common, just different new way of interaction. A digital artifact is it's not physical or not, not, not only physical. And they present a new kind of, of, of complexity. Complexity. Many times the interaction has to invent from scratch when we was talking about that. Uh, we were talking about this point, you know, 2009, 2010, the iPad and the iPhone and the iPad. iPod, sorry. It's a bit, the designer has to invent a new kind of way of interacting with the exhibition. And uh, so, and Okay, in, 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 in the museum settings, it's even, in my opinion, more specific because the important 
of the content is so strong and so you have to interact not, not only with the physical space, but with the information space. That is even more, it, it, it's a new challenge. And uh, so we, many designers, the, the design researchers speak about an aesthetic of interaction. And this is a, a, an important point because the, an aesthetic of interaction poses the problem of designing with time, designing in, in this, within the space, designing action, and designing again informa in, an information space. So there are design methods like uh, such as uh, scenario based design or other methodology that allow designers to better deal with these parameters. That are not that stuff. And of course, uh, the digital experience and the design experience. Uh, a digital media, a, a digital, a, a digital media is not alone. You know, it's necessary to think the device, the uh, single device, within a more complex environment constituted of content. Object on display, website, infographic, and other aspects. So, let me put some up. There are several, these are just some, some examples of digital design, design areas. And um, it, it's interesting for me to look at this design area, not like something that are, that are isolated. But think them related with dependencies. So it's just this is just an hypothesis of, of research. It's too early now to, to give final funding. But you know, if we think at the process, the, the, some design areas can be more prominent at the beginning, let's say the user experience, and other more at, at, the, at, at, at the end of the process. But even most important are the relationships that there are between areas. User experience design and interaction design are very overlapped. And, uh, and there are relationships and dependencies also within the, the same design. Can you articulate the difference between those two? I'll show you an example. And, uh, and uh, maybe we can discuss about this, this detail. Because well, I, I can teach you, I can, I can anticipate something. And, uh, you know, if you work between two, let's say, different areas, and of course, some, the border between one area and another is not the line, it's very blurred. But, you know, as a researcher, I mean, with the need to communicate to students, I have to find name, and put a touch name or something, so I have to call that user experience design. Even if, in the reality, the designers don't care user experience, designer, or interaction design. Maybe the design, the problem the design has to fit into the two areas. So, but if you have to communicate between two different design, design areas, let's say user experience design and interaction design, you have to find a way to communicate. And so, how? Uh, which through document, through prototyping, what, what, what is in the middle? If you are within your field, maybe alone, you don't need that. But because the, the digital media project, process, the project, are so complex, this pro project involves more than 20 people. So it's necessary to understand how these people deal and work together. So, um, Okay, I'm going to, to show you a little bit of, of, of what I analyzed in the in Institute for Emerging Initial Project, a project that involved uh, the Institute of Emerging Initial for the North Carolina State University, the Second Story Interaction Studios, and Gallagher session. And uh, I will show you a video because it, the video explained better than me in the project, <coughs> and it's really well done. 
and stuff. At the heart of the new James B. Hunt Jr. Library at North Carolina State University is the Emerging Issues Commons, a space to gather, learn, collaborate, and take action. Working with the Institute for Emerging Issues, Second Story created a system that enables and inspires civic engagement, putting the tools of public policy into everyone's hands. Visitors experience the process behind government policy and are invited to get involved and add their own voices and ideas. Acting as a beacon to draw visitors in, the Pulse is an 82-foot hanging sculptural ribbon made of a flexible LED panels. Alive with vibrant colors and motion graphics, the Pulse displays current news feeds, headlines, tweets, and statistics from around the state. The Overture film introduces visitors to the history of North Carolina politics, its landscapes and people, and the challenges and possibilities ahead. The Connections area brings open source data to vivid life. As you approach, a 16-foot interactive wall reacts to your movements, visualizing data from across the state and engaging audiences of all ages. At the Connections tables, visitors can explore and compare statistics county by county, informing their own view of what policies should be adopted at the local and state levels. In the Voices area, visitors browse a growing collection of short historical and contemporary films shot on location throughout the state. These stories reveal how individuals and organizations have worked together to meet the state's challenges. In the Ideas area, a series of collaborative multi-touch tables invite visitors to work together to browse innovative solutions, rate them, and contribute their own. The Partners Wall recognizes those who help make the Emerging Issues Commons a reality. Embedded LED panels showcase the people and institutions that have contributed, and a touchscreen allows visitors to search and learn more. Through the Commons website, the experience is extended so all North Carolinians can be part of the discussion, and people around the world can share their insights and learn from the progressive actions happening in the state. The entire Commons is supported by a custom content management system that ensures that new data, stories and issues can be continually added to keep content fresh and relevant. User-generated content can be analyzed to help inform future public policy. Through this unique system of interactive tools and stories, the Emerging Issues Commons brings people together, physically and virtually, to do something, to get involved in the democratic process, to learn more about the issues and challenges we face, and to become more informed, engaged citizens. So this is was an introduction of this complex project. I would like to, to pay attention at the, the, early, at the early beginning of the design process where the concept generated. Because it's here the user student designer played such important role. And then um, I had a, um, a really interesting conversation with uh, The design um, when start a new project has the temptation, temptation to jump immediately at the conclusion of you know of, of the project, thinking about the final form, thinking about the final interface. And it's, it's okay with, with this approach, but you know for him, also for me, the, the design required to to refrain to go immediately at the end. And thinking before at the, at the experiences, and so in this case, they they means the designer Gallagher and the second story in the production studio, collaborating very strongly, strictly, and together with the with the, with the people at the Institute of Emerging Issues, with the team that was created for this project. They start <coughs> from the content. They start to uh, think through this meta narrative that comes from um, from uh, the meta narrative that wrote the, the, the Institute of Emerging Initiative team wrote 
And the designer, the user experience designer, together elaborate this very basic and very effective meta narrative. The meta narrative is, is constituted of three parts the elements entering into the system, as you saw in the video. Elements react with one another within the system, undergoing change, change. and elements exit with increased energy and new purpose. Together with this meta narrative, the, the designers pay a lot of attention about the context, not just physical context, but the, the, the spirit of the place. And in this case, <coughs> you know, the, the, this digital this installation is strongly related with the history of the North Carolina. In the history of North Carolina, <coughs> the textile industry plays such an important role. So these two things can uh, come together and, um, and the designers started the, the designers started to you know to pay uh, basing you know the, the generation of, of the concept on, on the meta narrative and the metaphor of the textile, they start to think about objectives and goals for each of the three experiences. And uh, they go ahead thinking about also at the experience. I have just to specify one thing. In, in describing this process, I have to be to abstract, abstract the very, very young. In, in, in reality, they didn't follow a strictly, strictly rigid process. But for me, in order to formalize knowledge, it's necessary to, you know, put myself in, in, in a in little more abstract, abstract level. So, so something that seemed really uh, a clear sequence isn't. It's not important for me because it's, it's, a, it's a way to formalize the knowledge. So they go and they start to think about this, uh, the, the level, this level of experiences and how uh, the digital could be engaged and can be, could be given with, with fulfilling experience. And uh, they came out with these five experiences, four, when one is, is, is the, the thing of the in one, and another, and that's more important. And for each experience, they found, they, they defined sub experiences. Together with this, they, they elaborate very initial concept of the space of how the exhibition could have been done, that could be, have been take shape. And so the experience, plus these first sketches that were so important because it was a way to have feedback from the client, these two things together uh, like converge in this experience flowchart. It is essentially the, the experience framework of the exhibition. And, uh, and here, there are the three main areas that in the volume of the concept we became the three main areas that now constitute the, the exhibition. So just to uh, give you a little example about the question experience. You look at visualize the data that underpins all policy decision. This become the statist statistic visualized, and it's interesting, you know, that they don't think about any technology. They just think, okay, we have to find a medium, a medium that should show some uh, statistic statistic data, but they don't talk about. And the next step was this conceptual map for interactive media. This document was very, very useful for the interview that I did with the, with the, with the team in the institution because it was 
the first time where they start seeing the experience related with uh, with the, the, the medium, the, the, with the medium that they wanted to use. So the question we statistically visualize, but also with the case study, your uh, station. And there is another component that is really, really interesting, that they start to merge together the experience inside with the experience online. And if you look, you know, on, on the on, right on the left, it is online, on-site experience, and online. And so, the entire exhibition is is based on, on, on this initial concept of phase that is strongly user experience, user or physical experience. Of that. And, and the final step of the, this early phase was this mode of interpretation. Or local, where there are the exhibition, there is the, the, the exhibition, the, the design of the exhibition, and integrated with the exhibition, that there are with the digital interactives. It's, again, it's really interesting. I would like to, pay, to, to underline that we are in November 2010, more than two years before the opening. And if we look at the final project, of course, there are differences, but the the so the, so the, the, the essential essential parts are the same. And working in this way, according to, to my research, is really interesting because it's it's a very effective way. Because during the process, you can change the technology, but you don't change the experience. This makes it important. Can I ask a question? Sure. I don't know if you're going to talk about this. I'm curious for these early documents, with Gallagher and Second Story, who are collaborating on those and so how they did that. This project has a strong collaboration. It was a very good feeling between the design team. Sometimes they physically work together. And so Gallagher is in DC. The second story is important. They flow, you know, in, in that place, and they adopt specific design strategy, like you know, create a small mm -hmm. team of three, four people, and each team has to have, a, let's say, a user experience designer, a developer, and uh, a creator, and uh, someone that uh, has the, the, the knowledge of the company. Another time they just work, they, they work separately and they converge in, in, in work session. And, but, so yes, they work very in collaboration. The two design fields and the institution. And the, <clears throat> I don't have time to, to show anything, everything, but if you, I had the possibility to see uh, the database that they use to, to share information. And you can you can see really clearly, you know, how you know, the, the ball jump amongst the the these actors. And uh, okay, modes of interpretation. The this experience framework. I don't. And so <clears throat> the next and here I come back to. to the question that Dan goes for, where there is connection between one area and another. Again, it's kind of an abstraction here, but it's, it's, it's a good way to give you an example. Here we are kind of in the user experience area. Here, the design, the interaction design can be done. Because now, after you know the, the framework, you can work on each single part of the exhibition, and so you have to pay attention also the interaction with the, with the, with the, with the space, the interaction with the, with the device. So this is what, you know, 2010, the, <coughs> the first uh, concept of, of, the, of, the, of the world that after we can work, elaborate the world. Okay. 
<coughs> and this is important not only for the physical experience, but it's a way of working because such complex projects have to be split in several work sessions. And in a particular moment of the project during the design development phase, they decide to do four, they plan four different work sessions. And so they could work on each single, single, on each single aspect of the exhibition, but without lose the vision, the vision. And this was thankfully this framework. Jumping you know, to another area, to another aspect. Sure. But there's also that thing that I feel that is, and sometimes God is a sudden contact in the thing that has to be the thing. So there is a even higher interaction instead of these things, so that you like to do the data. This is a really good point. We will. Uh, so the, the, the comment was, uh, we haven't heard about the uh, the constraints of, of also the build out. Who who does the build out? We're just looking at sort of conceptual. Um, yeah. And also, in the gallery, I went with another design firm did the building, and it was a design firm from North Carolina. Of an architect, so an data architect, and so they have to work in that space. And so, as you, you say, the constraints were, were present, and they have to, <coughs> to to challenge that constraints. And I can give you an example. Um, yeah, at the border here there are a big windows, and so <coughs> they they would have liked to do another kind of interactive here, but because of the constraint of the light that comes from outside, they have to change this with the, the, the concept. <coughs> and the second story has a, a specific uh, uh, designer in, in the studio, and it's Daniel Mayer. He played this double root, you know, if <coughs> pay attention to the digital design, but at the same time, the execute design. So <clears throat> it works in between physical and the digital as a bridge, you know, to collaborate between two to 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 design fields and he he is an architect. So he works also on the bridge with the physical space. So there are many kinds of constraints that you you know design more always in space set of many constraints, challenges to find the the best solution to keep that. And I just, you know, we could put a placeholder on this right now, but it's a fascinating uh, thing for you to consider in your research as you look at these collaborations that these kind of constraints are mm -hmm. present, especially when you look yeah. at digital media that's fully integrated into mm -hmm. the digital space. Yes, yeah. that collaboration is, and sometimes lack thereof, is, is, mm -hmm. is intact. Honestly, I, <clears throat> I don't have, you know, the time and that for. You know, you have to put the constraint in what's in my research. And so there is a moment in my research that you know, I have to stop to look at that. In this case, I could have interviewed the architect. And many times the architect starts the building without the consciousness and the attention for the, for the final exit. So the exit designers have to. To work a lot to, to solve the problem that design, design, the architect that worked in another scale, they need to do it here. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm sorry, I'm doing bad facilitation here because I looked at the time now. We are getting closer to where we started a little a little later. Uh, but I, I can work up into two okay. minutes. So okay. I can. Okay. There's a lot under the water there. I mean, I mean, yeah. You know that. But that, that yeah. is very good, good metaphor. There's a lot of And um, yeah, the, the important of the documentation, the documentation is not just something to satisfy the contract, but something 
tools to communicate so important. So paying attention to each kind of documentation the designers and the museum production use would be really interesting. Or oh, there are many artifacts and design and design activity that designers use and they are very assist. I can go through this very quickly. But so it's interesting it's, it's important for me to understand which kind of existing methods and techniques that designer that work for digital media in the museum setting use. But I can go through the and so, yeah, there are. I'd like to spend, if I can, two minutes in an evolution of design prototyping because the prototyping is so important. To a designer, <coughs> yeah, you know, they don't have a linear direction for the opening to the ending of the project. Uh, an important design research uses the metaphor, you know, the designers are kind of explorator in the forest the jungle, and they know more or less where is the final point. But they have, they don't have a clear direction from point A to point B. So to move from one point to the beginning to the end, they have they have to construct their own route. And the GPS is prototype, an important part of this GPS. Because through the prototype you can you know design is an evolutionary process and an evolution you know constant design during the process in constant evolution. So the designers together with the museum petition have to move a little bit, test, change direction is necessary, and testing they find other problem that can solve in another step. And little by little they arrive at the at the final component. Prototyping is has to be done at least in my from my, from my point of view, in, in any moment, you can prototype the idea. You have guessed Dana and Molly last month in December. And I really like the, you know, the importance that they get to the prototyping, the prototype idea from the very beginning. There are prototypes that more standard prototypes like from Sun Lucas, Mocha stuff. The traditional prototype for sketches to computer. Or there are video prototypes to prototype the story. How much important is to tell the story in this? And so prototype a story to be important. This is like a white frame. Or we are we are we are in second story important in the media lab and prototype style one to one. Because the experience again is not only between the visitor and the digital media and the interface, but it's between physical, physical maybe, the digital interactive and the physical space. So to reproduce a one-to-one -one scale, scale is really important. Or can make the pattern job. So okay, can can do this one. Um, okay, it's there are any, any researchers working for others. I I as you as I showed you, I'm kind of at the, at the beginning, and I found out several patterns. I have the next the challenge, in the next one year and a half, is to start finding connection and with this theoretical framework. So this is not a final framework. I put this guy just to tell you that I have this intention to put order in the meta level between the things that I mentioned before. And so I cannot share with you the right because of that. And again, I'm really interested in education setting. I love teaching. And so my research would be useful, of course, for the students in museum studies, but also for a basic other research. That a PhD can spend three, four years only thinking about the documentation or thinking about the prototype. And so, you know, this is the next for, for my research. Grazie, thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, this uh, it has to bring up a lot of interesting 
ideas for all of us. I, I, it does for me, um, but I want to give you a chance to, if there's anything that occurs to you you'd like to ask Mark about right now in regards to this uh, really interesting questions. study. I have a, a question for you, and I, I mean, what I'm, I'm a little curious about process working. When we talk about collaboration, it's great to have a, a session where we can all kind of be equal. But at the end of the day, one, one of the constraints and one of the challenges is one, figuring out who's signing off. Um, for the museum, we are the clients we hire subcontractors. But within the museum, who's the client? Who, who makes these decisions? I'm curious what, yeah. what you found and then anybody else who wants to yeah. weigh in. I'm always interested. Yeah, my research is not very focused on the management thing, but of course I cannot avoid pay attention to this. So the ideal platonic design approach is like without fear. Yeah. Because you know the idea. The, yeah. The ideal ideal. And uh, in this case, you know there was a very intense collaboration between designers and the uh, Institutional team, and uh, I don't know exactly who signed, but I know that decisions were taken, you know, very kind of at the same level. In other occasions, there are a strong hierarchy. From the point of view of the design, one figure that is really important is the project manager because they have to take the time, and so many times the the decision and the sign pass through her voice or her or his voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's absolutely necessary because, like in orchestra, it's necessary to have a director. Yes. And so I don't want to say, to tell what the project manager has to do, but I can tell you the importance that the project manager has. In and and in, and in my experience, it's um, you, you, somebody's in charge of the contract and somebody's a point of contact. So it kind of, things flow through, sometimes it can be kind of a pinch point that, that's just the, the museum representation, you know, is this point of contact. But then they have to kind of look sometimes one way at a contractor and the museum over here, and it's not so much they stand in the way, but if everybody were to collaborate straight across the museum and these uh, contractors, it could be, uh, it might be very difficult to manage. But I, I, and I'm I always curious was, to hear what other people have to no, say. Because, you know, we, we kick off last Day, you know, yes. maybe this is, could be another point to, to think about, and, and so your feedback in the next interviews with other, we, you should help me a little bit to look sure. at that. Yes, Robert. In today's part comment, part question, it seems it seems like if I understand what you're trying to do. This process, it seems to be a process between generation of ideas and, and working on your theory and then the practice. Mm -hmm. and, and the process that you have to come through. Is that what you're trying to The process of my research or the process of the design? The, the, the conceptual framework you're putting on the design. It, okay. Uh, how do you describe yeah. The final conceptual framework will be the result of the investigation of the reality, speaking with museum practitioner and designers. But you know, when you have to translate something and something that's really, really complex, like a design process for a project like that, there is even in this case a compromise. And so one compromise is to abstract something, so to reduce the tape. When you when you don't uh, uh, formalize the tape, you, when, when you don't uh, put in the research a lot of detail, you lose something. But it's also necessary to lose that details to you know to have a better, clear idea of the final framework. So my main aim is to create the theoretical framework. And I will. I am pretty sure that I will not able to go in the detail of any aspect, because if I will pay attention at the detail, let's say I will be become the most 
expert in the world in documentation and prototyping, I will lose you know, the entire framework. And because there is no, for, see, there is a lack of this framework for educational and other things, I think, and our, my supervisor together with me think about the importance to put the basis and after construct and, and specify each category and area of this framework. So uh, probably I don't, don't I didn't answer your question, but it comes from the reality and and the result is theoretical. And in this bridge there are social science approach, the interviews, uh, theoretical reflection, the finding categories and writing a lot of memos to be here and share something in order to improve my understanding, thank your feedback, something like that. And so you, do you think there's one theory that you'll be able to generate that will cover the exhibit design? No. Okay. It's, my, it's my way of <laughs> No, no. Okay. It is no, yeah, it's not, no, no, no. OK, so then, then, then how do you know? Is can, 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 you, can you say because one has you find a good result that the process is better and the theory under which it works is better? Or is it, or is, uh, how do you separate individual from the process? Or even so conceptual choices. Right. Yeah, no, OK. Uh, sorry, because I didn't specify this and give you. Thank you because it's good. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very, because you know, it's an abstraction of very something that happens in the reality. And, um, and I'm not going to come up with the right process, but my approach is more reflecting on something in order to give others the knowledge to create their own way of doing something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so there are kind of approximation, but is it real approximation? Because I'm following my process, and even if at the end I will not be able, because it's impossible to find the right framework for the right table to do something, especially the design approach, because it's so it's not a rigid scientific process. So, yes. Yeah. I mean, it, again, yeah, it's, it'd be probably impossible to do this, but it would be equally interesting to go and study a, a project that didn't do well or didn't finish. Yeah. Because and we would be able to learn and about the processes the, in that way. Open too. to other, the, the, the possibility to reflect to, of something that I will have come out at the end of my research. And in any case, I'm following a scientific process, a social science process. So I'm not doing the thing randomly. It's any step of my research is, is is made by consciousness and attention for. I think it's I think it's a great practice. So it's what philosophers of science do: we study yeah. scientific practice and then try to create yes. a logical structure for yes. it that is philosophically sound. Yeah. And, and and scientists just keep going on doing what they're doing, and philosophers have to catch up. <laughs> How did you logically change your methods and still come out and do something like that? So I think it's a great practice. Um, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, we're we're looking forward to seeing your your study when you, yeah, you yeah, get sure. further along. So we invite you back. I think in the All meantime, right. I'll just ask you in this in this community here: Are are you looking for specific feedback? Can people get in touch with you? Um, there may be some, some other questions and things that occur. I think that with my presentation, hopefully I give them an, a, an idea of what I'm doing. Now, if people that are listening to me are, know a little bit, we can contact me. You can come in here, come in my office at MIT. I will stay in MIT until September. After I will move for the last year of the project in Leicester, in the UK. And so you know, there is my website. and. It is my email, and you can call me, and I will be happy to talk and listen what you have to say to you.
Okay, very good. So we'll just do a little housekeeping. Thanks again, Marco, for, Thank you for presenting this work. It's very interesting. I'm glad you could be here. Um, we are going to do another Welcome Wednesday coming in a, about a month. Uh, no, two weeks. Two weeks. Uh, <coughs> oh, that's not. It's going to be uh, on Thursday, actually. All right, so. We're going to do a, a session on Maya side with Peter Haydock. We're also going to do a session, on, uh, kind of a, a collaborative session, I guess, with the, with the gaming list or the gaming people. So stay tuned. Um, come to more of these things. And um, I, in the very little time I have, I, I want to just address something very quickly. Um, I think I want to address this Wi-Fi. Are we addressing yeah. that? We, we have put a link on, on the wiki page. And we invite, invite you to, to put in your... Um, your, your advocacy of how we might change the Wi-Fi policies right now. Also, I think we're really encouraging you to talk to your IT people about any issues you might be having with the Wi-Fi guests that public needs to use. I know at other institutions, we've seen a lot of issues with the click-through agreement uh, appearing in the Uh, issues and a uh, real specific use case, the better job we can do in sort of informing the upper management on how to make the best possible experience for our visitors. So with that, we'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you.